Let us prepare our hearts to receive God's word. Please turn to Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 4 to 9. Gospel according to John, chapter 1, verses 4 to 9. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light, that was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. We already meditated on the first few verses of this important book in the Bible, the Gospel of John. And we spent time particularly understanding that Christ is God. He is not merely a man. He is God who came to this earth, who became man to save us from our sins. Oh, he is not just a great teacher or a, just a great philosopher or a, a moral teacher who taught a lot of good things to the society. He is God who came to this earth to save us. Today's passage in the verses which we read today, uh, John liked to use this word, light, and he ascribed it to Lord Jesus Christ. And in many of John's writings, we can see even in other books, John likes to use this phrase, light and darkness. And in this passage, we can see particularly he introducing that theme and he says, Jesus is the true light. I think we are all familiar with the words light and darkness. When we open the Bible right in the beginning in Genesis, we can see how God created light, referring to the physical light which we have. In Genesis chapter 1 verses 3 onwards we can see, And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness and God called the light day and the darkness he called night and the evening and the morning were the first day. So when we open the scriptures, right in the beginning itself we can see these terms particularly referring to the physical light and darkness in this world. And it is interesting, this creation of light and darkness, the Lord accomplished it without the creation of or the usage of means like sun and moon, the stars. Later, we read in Genesis chapter 1 verse 17, that God set the stars in the heaven, in 17, and God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness, and God saw that it was good. In verse 16, it says, the one greater light, and one lesser light, the stars, sun and moon, the Lord created. But even before that, we can see the Lord already shed light on earth, on the creation. And that shows to us that He can bring light into this world of darkness, even without stars, even without the means of sun or moon. He is the source of all light, even in the physical creation. And in Revelation, we read, in the new heaven and earth, there will be no sun, no, no moon, no stars, but there will be light. So God is the source of light, even the physical light, which we see, which are essential or necessary for even our life. Even the plants grow because of the sun rays, because of the light that it is receives from the sun. And even our own day-to-day -day life is sustained in a great way by the light that the Lord gives to us, the physical light that the Lord provides to us through suns and also through moon. And change of uh, seasons or day and night, all this is accomplished in God's plan by the giving of physical light. But we can see after the creation account, once the Lord created man, and the Lord continued to provide them the means for their sustenance. The Lord put them in the garden. 
but they disobeyed God. The word of the Lord describes that also as a kind of darkness, where man disobeyed the truth of God, the word of God's word. Man doubted God's promises and received the curse from God. And this the word of the Lord describes as darkness. We are dead in sin and we fell into darkness. So right after the creation, we can say even if the physical light is here, spiritually we entered into an age of darkness, a state of darkness. And we all know how it happened. The devil tempted Adam and Eve and in that way the whole human race endured into a state of darkness. But the Lord didn't abandon us in darkness. The Lord want to redeem us, want to save us from this utter darkness. So God came up with his word, his promises to save us. And in God's word, those truths that the Lord brings to us to save us from spiritual darkness, it is also considered as light from God. So the promises of the gospel, Genesis 3.15, we can see God announces that the Lord will send the seed of the woman, the Lord Jesus Christ, to crush the head of the serpent and redeem the world from darkness. So the promises of God, the spiritual promises that the Lord gives to us, the word of God, all these are announced to us so that those who believe in him, those who believe in his promises, were taken out of spiritual darkness and will be brought into spiritual light. So where there is word of God, where God's truth is proclaimed, there is spiritual light. So even in the world which is full of darkness, because of evil, because of sins, there is hope wherever God's word is announced. The Israelis in the Old Testament had the privilege to hear God's truth, God's word. And many of them saw the light and they believed in his promises. We can see how Noah came out of a dark generation from the darkness of the world where he lived. He believed in the promises of God and the Lord brought him to the truth of his promises. And we can see how many people in the Old Testament, in the Old Covenant had the privilege to taste God's word and come to true light out of the darkness where they were in. And just before the, the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, we can see there was a time of darkness. Because after Malachi, there was a time where God didn't speak to his people. There was a silence from God. And we can consider that period also as a period of darkness for the world. Because God's truth through the prophets, God's word which brings light to the people is not coming to them. They are not receiving God's word. In that way, they lived in the time of a darkness even during the intercovenantal or intertestamental period. But the Lord didn't leave them completely hopeless. Even through the prophets, the Lord already prophesied that the true light, Lord Jesus, will come. And the Lord sent a prophet even before the Lord Jesus to announce the coming of this greater light, the true light. And he is John the Baptist as we read in the scriptures. So in the world where there is much darkness, we can find light, particularly when we listen to God's word through the prophets that he sent. When the Lord's word is announced, when the gospel is proclaimed by the prophets, indeed there is true light. And John did that. John announced the coming of Lord Jesus Christ. That's why in the verses which we read it says, he was not that light in verse 8, but was sent to bear witness of that light. The other prophets who went before him, 
also called the Israelis to come out of their darkness and to look forward to that light which was promised that is Lord Jesus Christ. And this was the ministry of John the Baptist to call the people to look to Lord Jesus, to announce him to, so that people can look to him and come out of their darkness. Even in the church today, this is the function that we have as pastors or preachers who announce God's word to his people. Our duty is to witness for the true light, Lord Jesus. John the Baptist lived before the coming of the Lord Jesus, so uh, he was considered as an Old Testament prophet. So he announced more about the Lord Jesus, his death and resurrection, looking forward. But we all announce about that light looking backward to the cross, that the light already came. And it is through the preaching, through the preaching of God's word, as I mentioned in the beginning, where there, there is God's word, where there is God's promises announced, there is spiritual light. There is a means where people can come out of their darkness and come to true light. So in the churches, when the gospel is proclaimed, pastors, when they faithfully preach the word, we are inviting people to look to the true light, Lord Jesus Christ. Are we as servants of God, are we as people of God called to witness for Jesus, are we inviting them to look to the true light? Sometimes as ministers of God's word, sometimes we lose focus. Instead of proclaiming or preaching about Christ, we talk about other matters. Sometimes in some churches or some places, they like to bring the attention of the people to other great men of this world. They may be even Christians. Instead of talking about Christ and his ministry, sometimes the churches deviate from proclaiming the good news of salvation. They may preach about kind of a social gospel where how the society can be changed. Or they may preach from the pulpit much about politics, how the government can be changed, how the Christians should be voting. So instead of bringing people to Christ for salvation, the message of gospel is changed and substituted with other things that they may, may be the reason that people like such messages or people like to hear about those things. Maybe more members may be part of the church. The focus changes. So instead of the true calling that the Lord gave to the prophets in the Old Testament as well as to the ministers in the New Testament, to preach Christ, the focus goes to other agendas, other messages. But here we can see how John was very faithful in witnessing about Lord Jesus. He had a message to announce to the people. He know what is his calling and he did it. He rebuked the sins of the people, called them to repent and call them to look to Christ for salvation, for the forgiveness of their sins. And may that be the case for us as preachers or every church where they claim to preach the word of God. They claim to represent or witness for Christ. May we all exalt him. May we all preach him. May we all bring the People of this world who are in darkness. May we all bring their attention to the true light. And here we can see when we study John's ministry, John the Baptist's ministry, he, he said, I must decrease. He must increase. He wants the people to understand that he is just an ambassador. He is just a person who is called to witness for Christ. And this should be our attitude when we serve the Lord. We are instruments in the hands of the Lord. We are given this privilege to announce about what Christ has done for our salvation. So instead of bringing attention to ourselves, let us ensure that Christ is proclaimed and the people who hear 
look to him for true salvation to get true light and john came and john was sent to bear witness of that light and the verse name says that was the true light which lighted every man that cometh into the world so jesus as a man who came to this earth god who took human flesh to came to this earth to bring light into this world john the baptist already witnessed about that the light is coming he looked to him not to me hear his message i am announcing what he is going to do and he came not only for the jews here it says he came to this world so that every man who cometh to him all over the world every man can come out of spiritual darkness into the saving light can come out of darkness and receive christ and come to light so here today as we worship the lord we are recipients of that grace where the gospel light came to us who are not even jews who were not part of the saving mercies of god in the old testament only few in the old covenant had this privilege where they can come to the saving knowledge of our jesus they can receive the true light they can come out of darkness but john the baptist already announced that he is coming he is the savior of the world he is the light for all people from all nations all tribes this is the only way that we can come out of darkness there is no other way you want to be in light you want to be in the way of light this is the only way this is not something that the lord gave exclusively for the jews or for israelites this is a way for the all world for the whole human race he is the source of light and only he can bring us to light and that teaches us how important it is that we must proclaim him we must witness for him to all people people of all states people of all tribes people of all languages john the baptist ministry was restricted to certain areas where the lord called him to minister but we live in this new covenant where jesus already came and he commanded us to spread this gospel light to all around the world so as ministers of the gospel particularly in the new covenant it is also our responsibility to carry the light of the gospel to witness for this true light to all parts of even our own land to all kinds of people and that's the only way that they can come out of darkness to light there's no other way you know the mission movement where they want to go and minister to the people even there are many christian missionaries they go to the field even to far uh, areas where the gospel is not proclaimed maybe bible is not translated it was all motivated by the commission of the lord jesus to spread this light to all the world we can see the apostles doing that we can see many missionaries even in the early church and also in the reformation history and even in the later ages carrying the light of the gospel to far away places where christ is not named but somehow in modern age when we talk to many missionaries when we talk to many people who work in the field where they say they are there as missionaries when we talk to them sometimes it seems that their understanding of missions is different their motivation or their focus is maybe to educate the poor children there maybe to eradicate poverty there maybe to plant some schools maybe to ensure that some hospitals are there so that medical facilities are there and when we ask them okay more more we want to know more sometimes they even say 
it may not be necessary that we should preach the gospel. They, they already believe in God. They already are very prayerful and religious people. So it is not necessary that we should focus on the gospel. So many people make the missionary movement or the, the mission uh, outreach that they do, evangelistic outreach that they do in the name of Christian missions, something like a means for social change. And they even some, I am not saying all, some even come to these conclusions that it is okay that whatever things that they are doing, whatever cultural backgrounds they are coming, they may have some gods and goddesses, let them go in that way. Let us do what we can do so that they will be changed. And I think this is the way many Roman Catholic missionaries go and do missions in many, many places. You ask to them, is it necessary that we should preach the gospel? Some may say it may not be so necessary. But we can do what best we can do to change their condition, to change their poverty or educational standards so that they can benefit something out of our sacrificial coming to this place. So they see this as a service whereby the people can be socially uplifted. But is that what the apostles did? When they went to places to preach the word? I think if they did what many Catholic missionaries or many so-called social missionaries do, I think the Roman government and all will give them great applause. I don't think they will come to kill them. Because they are doing something good for the people, right? Giving good education, giving maybe medical facilities or whatever, which are good for the society. But we can see what was happening to the apostles, what was happening to people who proclaimed about Christ. We know what happened to even John the Baptist. When they stood against these governments, these kings and the rulers who stopped them from preaching the gospel, they had to give their life. And they continued preaching, witnessing for this light. Because they knew that there is no other way, there is no other name for them to have salvation for the whole humanity. There is no other way that they can come out of darkness. The religions of this world, the social programs of this world, the ideologies of the cultures of this world, the great uh, philosophers of this world, they cannot bring salvation to them. The only way they can be brought out of darkness is by preaching the gospel. And when they look to Christ, they can receive true light. In that way only they can be truly saved. And that's why in the early church planting accounts that we see in the Bible, we can see this emphasis where the preachers and the ministers always preach about light that brings them from spiritual darkness. About Lord Jesus. I'm not saying sometimes uh, good Christians who are called to involve in such things like giving good education or charity or becoming doctors is not good. It's all well and good. But ministers who are called to preach the gospel, to witness, to announce about Christ, it's our duty to present the gospel to them. That's the only way they can be truly saved from darkness. And even Ordinary church members, through whatever means the Lord calls us to serve, maybe as medical missionaries or to teach in rural schools. When we serve there also, let us ensure that we proclaim about this true light. We proclaim about Christ so that they can know who is Christ and they can come out of their darkness and they can taste salvation. And that's the way in which we can be good witnesses for the true light. So he came as a light to this world. John witnessed about him in the midst of a dark world where God was not revealing or not giving any revelation. John came, John announced the coming of the Lord Jesus and did a faithful ministry of witnessing for the Lord Jesus. And then we can see how the gospel light went even to the far corners of the world where the apostles took the light to the world 
as commanded by the Lord. And only through Him that we can come out of spiritual darkness. The world in darkness, we have true hope only in the true light who is Lord Jesus. It is only through Him that we can come out of the darkness which we are in spiritually. And it is the duty of us, our servants and us believers to carry the light of the gospel even to the far worlds, far lands that the Lord has put us.